So today's little job is a system flush. I haven't done a flush for a while, and this one has been on the cards for since before Christmas, but customers have been having some building works done, so now's the time to get in to do it. It's just a heat-only boiler, not a combi, so what we're gonna have to do with this one when we get to this point of mains flushing it is isolating the tank up in the roof. But for today, connect on the MagnaClean onto our big MagnaClean unit, and we can begin flushing the system through. With this, it's a case of Obviously turning the heating off, isolating this MagnaClean unit, taking it off and then fitting the adapter plate on. I'm not sure if this adapter plate is going to go straight on because of where this is, we may have to alter that around because I think it's going to be a little bit awkward trying to get it in, but we'll see shortly. So yeah, what we're going to have to do is whip that off get that on, connect the Magna Clean up, begin putting the cleaning agent in the pot. What I'm gonna do is gonna, I'm gonna use MC5 in it first for a couple of hours, then drop to MC3, and obviously the inhibitor at the end. But for now, let's try and get that off, get the adapter plate on, and get it connected up. welcome back to the channel hope everybody is doing well as always now tonight's video when i went to edit it it turned out to be near on an hour long so what i've done i've chopped it in half so tonight you'll get part one and tomorrow monday i don't usually put a video on a monday but tomorrow night on a monday you'll get part two it's a heating system flush and there was great results from the end of it i used the magna cleanse and i used the thorough flush and it turns into a sort of a comparison video between the two. So if you're in two minds about what works, what doesn't work, keep watching because it's quite an interesting result in the end, but you'll find that out on Monday night. But today's video is the first day. I did the flush over two days. So today's video is basically the first day. Tomorrow's video will be the second day. So I don't want to waffle on too much as always. Get subscribed to the channel, hit the like button, click the notification button. So if I do put a video out on a random day, like a Monday, you'll get a notification that I've put a video out. As always, thanks for all the new subscribers to the channel. And I hope you enjoy the content. And off the back of having a load of new subscribers to the channel, we have got one or two DHCs cropping up a little bit. If you don't know what a DHC is, look at some of my early videos and it will explain all. Right, let's get on with it. But don't forget to watch tomorrow night's part two. There is also a bit of a teaser trailer at the end of tonight's video to show you what's coming tomorrow so you can see just from the top where these shutoff valves are for the magna clean are dead awkward to get to i've managed to get in to get that one so all we've got to do now is get nuts undone take this unit off and connect our adapter plate onto it but yeah it's uh it's quite tight to get in so you've got a little bucket a little foldable bucket underneath when we're going to take this Magna clean off. People have been going crazy for this. So if you want to pick one of these up, Amazon, 12 quid I think. So let's pop that camera down there and see if we can get to these fittings. So we wasn't able to fit the AD connector into the side where there is because once it's into position like so, this arm was catching on the side of the boiler. So we've got some of the fittings, connecting them into there with the cam rocks on the end. So now we'll just get the hoses, connect them up to there, and then in effect, the magma cleanse is in line into the system. We can then get some cleaner into these pots and begin getting some chemicals in and cleaning this system through but while we're here while we're here let's take a look at so this is the magna cleanse that we're working from oh uh, yeah see it's caught quite a lot in the old original one also in the bottom of there as well i don't know if you can see it some sludge and crap so yeah at least we know the system Certainly needs cleaning through. So we're just about ready to connect up into there. I've just got the AD Pro Check kit out of the van ready to test the water 
that we've got in the system. We've got a little bit of water in here that we've caught when we took the magna cleanse off, so we know that is the heating water. So what I'll do shortly is put it in there, run a test on it, and then I can see exactly what we're dealing with. But what I want to do first off is get the magna cleanse unit connected up. So this is the inlet, this is the inlet pipe. So if we trace that back around, it's always the one, or I always do it, with the one with the drain off on. So if we connect it onto this one, this is the return coming back to the boiler. This bottom one is going to be off there, in through the bottom of our magna cleanse unit, flush through, and then it'll come out of here into wherever the end of it's gone, wherever the end of it's gone here, into this one. So we'll attach this one onto the top. I was always dubious of these cam lock fittings when I first started using them. I didn't think they'd seal, but they are really good. So that's them connected up onto there. As you can see, we're using this table that I picked up over Christmas. It's really handy for things like flushing because you can lay everything out. So that's them connected up. I'll go and grab some cleaner out, out the van and we can fill these pots up with the cleaner and then we can basically open the valves up. That will be in line and then just get the heating back on and let it do its thing. The thing with the Magna Cleanse unit, running it through with the chemicals first, the system's under no pressure, so it's just in line. So we'll turn it back on and just run the heating as normal, as per the customer having the heating on, and it will just pump right through our system on these two magnets. As you can see, they are completely clean at the moment. That's that one, that's that one. But then, once we've uh, been flushing through, I'd like to see them pretty much full of crap. But yeah, so this one is just gonna flush all the iron oxide round, and then we can dump parts of the system out with the hose that we're gonna attach here. Tomorrow we will connect the thorough flush unit into this with the magna cleanse in, your, in line on the dump hose, so we'll still be catching some crap coming out tomorrow as well. But for now, Let's get this up and running. So this is the process I'm gonna do on this one. We've got the MC5, which is the rapid flush cleaner. This is perfect for what we're doing with the Magna Cleanse, and also you can use this on power flush systems. It's just a really good cleaning agent. So we're gonna put that in, run that up for probably two, maybe three hours, get it circulating around. Then we'll drop the system out, flush it through, and then we'll pop some MC3 cleaner in there leave that running and what i'll probably do is leave that running overnight with the cleaner in it because this system here set up in here isn't in the way of anything and then as i say tomorrow we can flush it through and get the thorough flush on it and then put some mc1 protector in it now a video i did a while ago um i was trying a system a relatively a relatively good system that i know and i knew the water was all right going in it and that system didn't have any inhibitor in it i'm in the process at the minute of learning a bit more out about the chemical side of stuff. Funny enough, I'm going on an AD Magna Clean chemical day next month, so I'm gonna try and film some of that for you, just as a bit of an insight. But yeah, that's the process we're gonna be using on this system. So let's get the MC5 cleaner in here. So we'll pop the magnet out. And we'll pour this in. So this will do on the bottle says 100 litres. So this system, I think, eight rads, 10 rads, I think. So that'd be fine because we're putting a cleaner in it as well anyway. So we've got them tightened up. Let's turn the valves back on and get some water at least up to these valves. And as we open it, you'll see, hopefully through the hoses, the colour of what the water is inside this heating system. So I've just had to switch this fitting out because I don't know if you can make it out there, there's a slight crack in it there, so I'm gonna to have to get a new cam lock fitting, but I managed to use one side of the 80 fitting, which is fine because it doesn't pass through it, it's just one side, I can use that. So we're now connected up, turned on. Now, if I open up this one, you'll see, look at this color of the water going into it. If that goes in there, when we open this one up, it will then filter that way through the system when the heating's on. So we should. Yeah, look at that. Look at the colour of that going through there. You can see it running up there. So, let's whip that out of the way. 
to not throw that water away yet because we're going to put that in there to test. So let's pop the heating on for now and the hot water. Um, oh. There we go. You'll see that now. Beginning to pump around the system. If you can make that out, you can now see it starting to pump around the system. Let some air out of these uh, pots. get some heat into the central heating system right let's do the check on the water so inside here is the water that come out of the magna cleanse there we go that is what come out of the magna clean unit as we took it off the wall as you can see this system is absolutely minging but we're going to sort that out so as with always with the pro check app we're going through so new water test let's test that um, select property right let me go and put the property address in as you can see on here we are none of the above because it's because it's a system flush. So we go next. Um, what is it? It's a system boiler. Connect job reference. I'll put that on serial number. We can scan that shortly. Uh, is there a magna clean? Is there a filter fitted? Yes, there is. Next, take a sample of the water, which we did. So we continue. Please take sample against a pale background. So I'll just do it against here. Continue. Then we go. What is the closest colour? I would say is dark brown and black. Continue. Uploading results. It's failed. So, water sample failed. Visual inspection. Presence of corrosion detected. Lab test is advised or a full system clean, which is exactly what we're doing today. So, we'll click done and then we can come back later on. Once we've got the system flushed, we can take a new reading from there and we can do a complete retest and see exactly what the system's like obviously with that now we can see the system needs cleaning the apps told us that to be fair we didn't need an app to tell us that so as i say we will flush this system through we'll redo this at the end of the job and i'll show you the results so we've got the heating system on now for probably two hours running it up with a cleaner through it and i've been around as always with the hip micro thermal imaging checking the rads and they all seem, to be honest, to be coming through. There's a couple upstairs that I'm just gonna double check because one of them was shut off and I had a little cold spot in it. So it was, so this one had a bit of a cold spot in the middle and luckily it's come good, it's come through. And then there's also another one. Slightly hard, you wanna appear? Because you this one, but no, no cold spots in that now. Spot on. So just come up into the roof now. While the heating system is running through with the cleaner in it, been round and checked all the rads. They're all fine. We've agitated them. I thought I'd pop up into here, into the roof, to get the tanks ready for tomorrow. Now, the cold feed to both these tanks haven't got any isolation on, so I'm going to put two isolation valves onto here. What we are going to have to do is put. A lever valve onto the uh, heat and fill from the header tank just so tomorrow we can shut it off when we do the mains pressure flush through obviously we'll have to cap off the vent as well so it basically isolate the tank and then tomorrow what I will, what we will do is take this tank out and completely clean all inside because you can see how minging it is but for now we'll cut the two isolation valves in and then when we drain it down tomorrow we can do the work on the tank so let's get two little ISOs, water's off, and cut them in here. So we just put a nut and olive on, same that side, and we we'll get a little bit of paste on it as well. So 
one done and then we just pop another isolator into there so we've had this running now with the mc5 in it and you can see from the hoses the water the color of the water inside the heating system is still pretty minging because this isn't a flush through machine this is to just catch all the magnetite which is doing fine so if we open up this drain you'll see just what the state of the water is so look at the color of that and that's just opened the hose up a little bit just to drain off a little bit to show you from the system so we'll shut that back off and let it carry on flushing through we'll leave it to flush through now for a few hours and then we will empty it all out empty the system out put some clean water in it and then put in if i can find it the mc3 system cleaner so we're going to dump some water out the system now with the hose here so if i open that up turn the system off open that up you've got the water draining out there and what I'm going to do while this is happening is turn the water off to the header tank so it drops the water out the header tank while we're up there, cut in a 15mm lever valve ready for tomorrow for the thorough flush. So we'll go up, get that header tank cleaned out, flushed out. I've got the hoover up there, got the wet vac up there and some rags and that. So we'll get it all cleaned out and then it's perfectly clean, ready for tomorrow. So we're up in the roof. We'll shut off the water feed to this tank and let it drain out then we can get rid of all the crap and that what's in there but yeah spark has got the lights off at the minute so we pulled out the uni light what's this one rl5250 perfect for up here as always if you want any uni light stuff use my code mjtiff 25 percent off but let's get the water out of here we can then cut in this lever valve into here and then clean out this tank so with the header tank drained down, we'll just cut in the, uh, the lever valve. And then it basically, is, it's easy to shut off the, the feed for the heating system, but also because we're gonna be mains flushing it, we don't want anything working its way back up into the tank. And then what we'll do tomorrow as well is cap off the vent when we do it. So, pop that off, cut a little bit out more. Cut a little bit more out of it. There we go, lever valve in. I've shut it off for now. So let's get this header tank cleaned out. Right, sometimes you get header tanks that are right up in the eaves of the roofs, but this one is not too bad. So we'll get the wet vac on it, which I've got here. Wash all round here, suck all the water out, get it all cleaned up. We've got some big wipes as well. Yeah, got some big wipes. Get in there and get all of this sludge taken out. Right, there we go, one completely clean header tank. So now when we refill the heating system, we know we're not gonna get any crap coming from this header tank down into the system. Right, so we've been upstairs, cleaned that tank out. We know that it's crystal clear now. Just turned it back on, so we're refilling the heating system up now. What I'm gonna do is just open this, just to drain a little bit more out and then We'll whip the top off here and we'll get some MC3 cleaner in it and then that can just swill around the system for the rest of the day. I will go around and uh, what I'm going to do is shut off all the rads bar for one, leave all the heating system and the cleaner running through that one rad, knock it with an agitator. What I'm using on this job is the rubber mallet as opposed to the agitator on the end of the drill just because it's just a little bit easier I find sometimes unless you've got a real stubborn rad and then you can get the drill one on. But we'll do that and then we'll do that process for each and every rad so we know each and every rad has been flushed through with the cleaner then as i say leave it running overnight and then tomorrow we can hit it with the thorough flush unit get some mains water pressure through it and get it completely flushed out so it's crystal clear 
So I've been around now, flushed through every single radiator, shut them all off, open one up and flush that one through with the Magna Cleanse unit. So everything from each radiator has gone through there. I'll show you tomorrow when I do the same procedure with the thorough flush kit because I just didn't want to show you twice in one video. It just gets a bit monotonous, but I've been there, done all that. So now when we open up the, uh, this heating system water at the minute, it is a lot cleaner. It's still a little bit dirty, but it's a lot cleaner than when we first started out. We'll flush a little bit more through via this unit. We're just waiting for Ben to come out to service this boiler. He should be here shortly. And then what we'll do, once Ben's done servicing that, we will put the cleaner into the Magna Cleanse, the MC3 into the Magna Cleanse unit, and then we can leave it overnight to do its thing. So Ben's just got here servicing the boiler. Um, we just finished flushing it through a little bit. And I said to Ben, as soon as he gets here, I'll leave him to do his bits. Um, once Ben's done, we're just gonna finish flushing a little bit more through with that. Then I'm gonna put the MC3 in it and leave it on overnight. But the boiler seems all right then, doesn't it? Yeah, all looking good, mate. Just setting it all up now, the ratios, so yeah. Um, so I always get people ask me, why don't you do gas? So years ago I used to do gas, but for me now, I don't get installs and Ben does all my service work for me. If ever I'm in a job like this, like the customer said, I want to flush of the system, boiler wants servicing, I'll just get Ben in, he'll do his bit, I'll do my bit. Work swings and roundabouts. Ben's passed me loads of jobs before, I've passed stuff to him, so, you know, for me, it doesn't work for me for gas-wise, but, you know, Ben just does. You do mainly sort of um, boiler so, breakdowns oh, and for estate work, agents, isn't it? Reactive work for letting agents, yeah. And that's a nightmare, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Keeps him busy, so, mate. But yeah, so Ben <laughs> don't get his hands dirty half the time. Yeah. Don't, you don't even fit boilers now, do you? No, that's it. No. He's got it easy. He's got it easy. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's how, how it works. I always get asked, why don't you do gas? You should do gas. For me, it's not beneficial. Ben doesn't want gas work, so that's that. So once he's done, as I say, we'll crack on with that. And then tomorrow, we get the th thorough flush system going. Right, Ben's been and serviced the boiler for us. Everything is all well and good inside there. What we're gonna do now is, let me just open this and show you the state of the water now in the system. Look how clean that is compared to what it was earlier on. So I've had that flushing through like that for a a while it's got the majority of the um, MC5 at the system. What I'm going to do now is add some MC3 cleaner into the Magna Cleanse pots and then we can leave this running overnight in situ as I've said earlier. So what we're going to do first of all is shut off the water to these. We'll get a little bit of water coming out just while the pressure's taken off. Now it's the first time I've had these open. I'll be interested to see what we've caught on the magnets. But what I'm gonna do is take these two out, use the Aquavac, suck, every, suck the water out of this pot, and then we can add the MC3 cleaner, pop the magnets back in, and then go again overnight, as I've said. So let's have a look at what has come out of this system. Yes, a fair bit exactly what we like to see and the other one yeah that's good so we took all that magnetite out as well as as you will have seen at the start these hoses were like they are a little bit discolored but coming out of the actual drain it was like well i can show you what it's like because it is still in the pot from earlier that's the color of the water that was running around the system so yeah, at least we know we've got a lot of the crap out. So we'll whip this out, we'll clean them magnets off and then uh, put the MC3 in. So we've cleaned off the two magnets, never get them together because they are very strong. So we'll just suck out the water that's in this pot. <laughs> that's that done. So now we can add in the MC3 cleaner and that can stay in overnight doing its thing so we get the magnets back in there fire it up and then we'll check back in the morning and see what those magnets have caught 
because it's not a combi, because it's not a sealed system, we've got to basically make it a sealed system. So we've got to go up, shut that half inch lever valve onto the heating feed that I put in yesterday. Just cracked open the thorough flush and you can hear everything now shifting around through the system. So now the whole of the thorough flush kit is flushing cold water through this rad. And you can see it's beginning to build up from the bottom. We've now shifted the rads to downstairs and we've opened one of the rads up downstairs and you can see how black this hose is now again running through here and that's what's coming out this is what has come out through the dump side of the thorough flush. 